Today, I'm going to be showing you guys something really important to the quality of your car builds and everything like that. It's something you need to know. It's something you should do when you finish any car at any time. This is part of the process, in my opinion. This is how to AO map everything correctly, the smoothest way possible. This is how I do all of my models. Um, and they come out pretty good. I, I've had a lot of successful AO maps. Probably a good 50 or so. And I AO map interiors and stuff like that too. So this, this process carries over. But what you'll first do is obviously we, we get the car in 3DS Max. Um, and then I have all the body panels selected. So one thing you can do to, to help look for that is I'll turn back on default shading. And when we come over to this view here, I select it all. And then I actually have hotkeyed. I set up my hotkeys. I don't, uh, under customize here, you can set up hotkeys. I set it up to control W and I can hide that selection. So I'm doing control W and then control Z just to make sure I don't miss a mirror or, you know, some, some small detail. This one obviously has uh, just black plastic mirrors, but that's how I initially grab the body panels off of it. Uh, step two, we're going to go modifier, selection, modifiers, poly select. Now, some people make the mistake here and they're like, dude, I, I don't get why it's working. What, what's going on? It's not working. Make sure you have them all selected and then click one of these boxes on the side. Um, this vertex one, I don't use it for this. I use it for some things like if I have to resize something like this, boom, I'll grab it here and then you could switch over and move those points around. Uh, I don't think it's going to let you do it when it's all these items selected, eight objects at once, but... You get the idea. That's how you would use that. I don't use the edge one. I don't use border. Polygon, uh, that's like fine fine tuning. Like if you just want to select a little piece like that, you know what I mean? Because this last one, the element tool, that's going to select by face, basically. So some people say, oh, just start with the sides and select what you can see just to make sure... Nope, that is not what I do. Step one, select everything. Because you're going to miss a little corner piece somewhere. You're going to miss something. And then we're going to go up here to my views, and I'm going to go straight to the front view. So now what I want to do is I want to isolate just the sides and leave just the sides selected. So I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to press Alt and click, and drag to the other roof line. That's how I'm lining it up. And release. Boom. So I see it left the hinges in there. And you know what? I think that's that's perfectly fine. We'll leave them with that. And you see it perfectly selected the sides. It might not be that perfect for you. Okay? I'm just going to be honest. The models, they're kind of... Everything's different. Everyone has them set up differently. Every creator makes their models differently. Don't expect it to go this smoothly. What you might have to do is pay attention. Uh, for example, if this, if this one row was selected here... And I couldn't unselect it. Here, let me, let me, uh... Then I would try to get a mental image of what this looks like. Or maybe I would even take a picture of my, on my phone, you know, and reference it when I get to that point. But obviously, not my issue in this case, so we are going to proceed. Uh, I could do the tops of the fenders here, by the way. I don't know if you guys did see that when I first was showing you, but that part is unselectable, so that could be part of the top map. But me personally... I think it gives awkward edges to the to the liveries if you do them. It makes the color look like it doesn't blend over as smoothly. I don't think that was proper English, and we're going to continue, all right? So, poly select, that was step one, a beautiful step one. Wouldn't you agree? And now we're going to do UV mapping. So UV mapping just tells a... Uh, tells the UV gods which face they're looking at exactly because it's dumb it doesn't know so what we're gonna do first is real world map size and that little thing in the middle that red box is what we need to be paying attention to so right now it's on this axis and then it has the front axis that's that way so it's facing front and back and this one so we're gonna start with that one and then we're gonna go back to UV coordinates and we can go ahead and go into step three unwrapping the UVW all right so we're going to open UV Editor here. We'll full screen that, and then I'm going to size this down a little bit. Like I said, this is my process. Not everyone follows this process. I'm doing, like, motions with my hands right now. Not everyone does this process. That's okay. Everyone has their own process. So what I do is I zoom in on this bottom left corner, 
And I'm going to drag it. As long as you're on these squares here, you should just be able to click and drag with the uh, freeform mode selected. I like the freeform mode. I'm a, I feel like, you know, we live in America. Actually, the, I guess a lot of sim users are worldwide, but here in America, we, we live free. You know what I mean? Free to, free to be bossed around by the government. It's pretty awesome. So not really free at all. All right, so you see I'm, I'm perfectly sizing it up. Uh, right here, that's that's a little uneven. So I actually have a, a mouse where I can turn my DPI down, which just turns down the cursor speed, basically. So I just dropped my DPI a little bit and rotated that to make it smooth. And then I'll check that bottom left corner again. Swag. Swag. Something we all got. Le epic AO mapping. All right. Let's go back, and now what we're going to do is grab the driver side. or Well, you know, depending on what country you're in, driver side. This is the left side. Always grab the left side, otherwise you're going to have two backwards maps, and you're going to have to invert all your liveries, and it's a mess. So just grab the left side. I've learned that over time. I was like, what is happening here? That's what's happening there. All right, so I'm just going every angle. I hate having to redo this step, so I just go overboard the first time and make sure I... Select everything as much as I can. And cool. If you want, you can always just alt click the other side to make sure you didn't accidentally select anything, but that, you know, that never happens, right? All right, so we're going to drag this away on just that axis. Boom. If you have strings here, you did something wrong. If it's stringing together, here, I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that. If it's stringing, you're not slinging. Or, I don't know. That that just came to mind real quick, but maybe not that. That kind of sounds like a Breaking Bad thing. That's not really what I meant. All right. No strings. It's lit. It's super lit. So, we'll throw it on that other side, and then we're going to mirror vertically selected sub-objects. Boom! It's already looking like AO map. Look at that! Looks like you know what you're doing. All right. So, then I'm just going to grab this and move it to the side. And that is my step one. Now, the reason I don't leave it in the middle here is because if you finish the livery and somehow you did forget a piece, they spawn right in the middle there. All right, step four. Back to poly select. So modifiers, poly select. Then we're going to get out the box again. Go to the front view. And now instead of alt clicking that selection, I'm going to just left click and drag that selection. Boom. This is all the parts I unselected the first time. So I'm deselecting my front panels first. Some people do the, you know, bumpers first. Doesn't really matter. Th that's, you know, strictly a preference thing. But now all those weird little vertices should be selected already. So we don't have to worry about that. I'm just going to peek underneath. Eh. See, this hood has hinges. It's, it's from a different game that relies on the hoods and trunks opening so now we can back to uvw map and we're going to set up the location of it again and it's going to be the first one real world map size boom z and let's unwrap that again this one super sweet we don't even got to mess with it right now for the time being we'll just drag it down here well we'll just, yeah we'll mess with it i'm just going to select those two then drag them down like that and select that last one. Drag it down like that. Leave some edges. You know, don't don't overlap them. All right. So that is in my bottom right quadrant. We're quadrating, and let's just quadrate back to a uh, poly select. Why don't we? Okay. I'm gonna go to the front again, and I'm gonna do that same selection technique where I'm gonna select in between the roof pillars there. And except this time. Can you guess it? Guys, drop a comment right now if you can guess what I'm going to do. Guys, leave a like right now to unlock the next two minutes of this video. And if you don't, I, you know, I don't know. I guess I'm just going to continue them. Honestly. All right. That's the last one. UV coordinates, UVW map. Let's take the dub. Real world map size. And unwrap. Boom swag. We got our bumpers. K 
Okay, uh, left quadrant. Again, no reason. No reason I choose the left, the lower left quadrant for these. No, no, uh, no rhyme to my madness. All right, and then we're gonna select the rear bumper, not the front bumper, because what it's doing is it's taking this image right here. So it's gonna have this bumper um, mirrored, basically. It's gonna be backwards right now. So anytime you make a livery, you would have to always constantly mirror those parts. You know, it's doable. Obviously, people that make liveries all day, every day for cars and Assetto, they probably know the struggle. I just try to get my maps right from the start. So, I was... I don't know why. I was just about to UVW map again. We just got to open up the editor and make sure I have no strings. All right, we are stringless. And if you look here, this is actually awesome. You can see the text is backwards. The Mutzang. So all we got to do is while it's selected like that, boom, we just hit the mirror again, and now it is correct. Um, and now if you don't have an obvious indicator like I do here with the Mustang thing, just trust it. Click it once. Trust that it worked. You know what I mean? Don't, uh, don't go overboard. All right, back to poly select. And we are going to select it all. And now we don't need a UV map because it knows where every piece is. We just go straight to the unwrap step. And we'll open the UV editor. And what did I forget? This That's why I don't leave that body piece in the middle because I clearly forgot something here. So I can select it and try to look around for it. I don't know. But you know what? We're not too worried about it. So what I'm going to do with that little piece for now, I got it selected. I'm just going to drag it up and out of the way. All right, we'll, we'll come back to this guy there. So let's select these, drag these back over. And since we already lined them up the first time, I just zoom in. And the way this freeform tool works is if you last select this free moving in the middle, then when you select over here, it'll free move. Um, and if you last select this, you know, single X axis or Whatever, whatever axis that is. I'm not going to lie. I don't remember. X, Y, Z. It's one of the three. So it's like a 33.3 repeating chance. Anyway, then uh, whenever you do it, obviously I can't go up and down. I can only go side to side. So that's nice. So boom. Lock in that corner. And then we're going to grab the bumper here first. I'm just going to size it down. My, my, uh... My number, for some reason, I don't know why, but I do the first three squares for the bumper here. And then I'll try to get it centered. And if you're not sure if it's centered, obviously I got one, two and a half, one, two and a half. And then I zoom into the middle. And we can just grab anywhere. Make sure it's nice and centered. Right, so that's bumper. Then we're going to grab all my top panels here. Shrink that down a good bit. And again, when I set this up, I'm going to leave three at the top for the back bumper. Or the whole back face. If you hold control, that'll, uh, that'll, that'll give it the uh, snap angle. And that'll also keep the aspect ratio, by the way. That's something I probably should have said as soon as I started doing that. But better late than never, right? I'm not even going to lie to you right now. So you see this spare piece here. Boom. I don't know what it is, what it does for us. And we will find that out together shortly. That is it. That's our AO map. That's it, guys. Congratulations. You're an AO mapper. We AO map together. Um, so we, if you wanted to, you could go to this here, Tools, Render UVW Template, and uh, you could actually save this template and use that as your body image. But we are not going to do that. We're not even going to worry about it. As soon as you finish that, you're done. Moving on to the next step. So let's go ahead and export. Uh, KS Editor. I have it on my hot tab at the bottom there. That's how I opened it so quickly. We are going to go... Obviously, this is not a 280ZX, but I'm just using this base folder to set it up it's easier than trying to you know make a whole new data folder for it and everything all right uh glass like this by the way annoying all you do is right click and make sure it's transparent 
That is the issue every time. Guaranteed. Save that as your KM5. Like I said, I understand this is not a 280ZX. So that is our car at the moment. Uh, these stripes are just part of the old skin, so ignore that for the moment. I'll, I'll fix that when we get to that point. But basically, get your car in here, and we're going to right-click on the body. And under here, TX Diffuse. We'll click those three dots, and just in the max size 2048, we're going to calculate the map. Boom! That's it. And that one came out beautifully. So, that is awesome. Doesn't look like there's anything that needs to be fixed or messed with. Um, and that little piece there, obviously, it was something kind of hidden because it doesn't really show up anymore. All right, and then if you click in that bottom right, a little save option comes up. I'm just going to save it to my desktop. So we're going to save this. And go to wherever your root folder of your car is. And I like using PNGs. Some people like the DDSs. I think DDS, you're a chump. Let's just face it. Uh, I don't know a good way to do this without Photoshop, so that is kind of a pitfall. All right, so, oh, I, I kind of just sped through that. I'm sorry. I pasted the image in here. I went to channels. I went to green, and I did control backspace, and then I went to RGB, and now I'm going to control A to select all and control C to copy. Now I'll bring this back up, say, uh, paste it over top of that, and we're going to save this one as body map. This will tell the specular values of, you know, not the specular values. I don't actually know what I'm saying. Specular values sounding cool. Uh, it's going to say where to be shiny or not. Uh, that's going to control the reflectiveness. So we'll, we'll watch these changes as I throw them on and it'll make more sense what I'm saying. So the first one, we're going to refresh the body. So now you can look around and make sure there's nothing... You know, nothing that looks wrong. See, it adds those nice shadows for the gas cap. The Mustang part looks a lot better. Uh, yeah. Okay, so now we'll watch at the bottom of the door when I load up this gloss map if anything changes there. Uh, yeah. And that's basically the whole process. That is AO mapping in a nutshell to make them look better. That's my process. And that's it. Boom. Look around your car. Make sure you don't see anything messed up. Uh, and that is AO mapping. This little bumper piece, I'll probably go back and fix that little shadow edge peeking over just by painting white there. But, uh, you know, it's nitpicking at this point. You do what you want. Make it look the way you want. And then to apply colors, what we're going to do, let's see one of my other colors, Starfire Red. We're just going to make a red color for it. So I'm going to go back to where my body is. And I'm going to create another layer over top of that. And switch the blend mode to multiply. Alright. Save as... Just like that. See, so it keeps all those nice shadows that look so good. That make the car look good in all different lightings and stuff. And that is it. Well, cool, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, it's going to be a little while before I put out another team effort release, actually. It's probably going to be a good couple weeks to months. I don't really know. Um, my plan is probably after summer, early summer, you know, I just put out the, the most recent pack with all the, uh, cars, you know, the Q45, Sport Cross was in there, the LS430, Z31, you know, just a bunch of cars that haven't really been ported over to a set of course yet, and I actually think I might make videos explaining how I port cars over because I want to see people make more unique stuff, so... Expect that soon. Maybe that should be a series because it's going to be kind of intensive and it's just something I've figured out how to do over the past couple months. But that is it, guys. I appreciate you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.